It must be a uh, Guinness book of records of all intros. And I think that's maybe because it's the end of the day, Peter. Yes. But you know what? It was a nice groove, though. It was a nice groove that I, I just put down. I, I'm going to say straight off, off the uh, off the old... The bat. Off the old bat there. That, yeah. um, I definitely prefer the sound of a mid-boosted overdrive into a Fender amp than I do a Marshall sounding overdrive into, into a Marshall, Marshall amp. amp. It's a little bit like, so, yeah. okay, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Well, I just thought, you know, we should just do this whole thing and then talk about them and then play these guitars. Now, what are we then looking at? Can anybody, would anybody dare to guess by looking at these guitars what they might be? Mick? Well, you got your hands up. I could see you over there. Oh yeah, <laughs> me, 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 sir, me. me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, is it plate tectonics, sir? Plate tectonics, <laughs> tectonic uh, plates. Right. So, um, Andertons. Uh, what happens is when you sell lots of Gibsons and Fenders and you buy lots of Gibsons and Fenders, you have the ability to be able to spec up some guitars um, from their respective custom shops yeah. to certain kind of non-standard specs but tweaked therefrom and so uh, the bright idea began with the dear old Gibson Les Paul here let me hold it for you um, as basically guitars that are inspired by famous guitars that you might know yeah not not, not artist signatures because they're definitely not that and not 
like dent for dent, scratch for scratch, spec for spec copies. No. Or reproductions, but just guitars that kind of get you in the mood. So yeah. Pete, Pete, for example, plays uh, a black strap with a maple neck. Yeah, which you might have seen on here. Yeah. Which, which is a 54 Relic from 1999, completely stock. Yeah, and who do you associate that guitar with? Well, when I look at it, you think Eric Clapton. It's Blackie, isn't it? Yeah, it's Blackie. But yeah. I didn't I didn't buy it because that was it. I bought it because I picked it up and it was nice. Yeah, and loads of people are going to walk into guitar shops tomorrow. They might not want to buy an Eric Clapton signature strap, but they might want uh, a guitar that's reminiscent of that famous yeah. guitar that he played. Exactly the same reason I ever bought my first Sunburst strap. Exactly the same reason I ever bought my first Sunburst Les Paul. Exactly yeah. the same reason I yeah. play all the guitars I play now is because I've seen somebody play them and gone, that's yeah, cool. That's the cooler. That's the guitar I want because I want to be that person. Bing. But, you ha Bing. but you have to remember that you know all of these uh, iconic guitar players, whether it be Clapton, whether it be John Mayer, whether it be Peter Green, whether it be Ooh, Keith Richards, Keith Richards. Uh, they all started out on a stock Strat, yeah, Les Paul, or a Telecaster, or whatever it was. They just went out and they bought it and they played it and they made it famous. They relicked it, they, well, they just, you know, used effed it. about with it and yeah. used it and played it till it looked like that. And then we associate that with that and, you know, that's everybody inspired, we it inspired Andertons to, to, to make some guitars that would look a bit like it, you know. Yeah, yeah. and, and nothing... the, the other route of doing this, of course, is going to a, a shop, buying yourself a Relic Strat and fitting it with gold hardware. And if you can be bothered to do that, Good for yeah, you. Good for you. If you can't be bothered. Yeah, or if you don't want to spec one up uh, from the custom shop and order it and wait for however many weeks yeah, it takes. Yeah, so it's, just, it's, so, it's uh, so the, the crew just went, you know. An extension of a theme. Exactly. So we themed it up and there is a, you can go on the website, links will be below. Have a look and there we are. So yeah. what I'm sitting with here is a Les Paul custom shop. Lovely. Um, no, it's kind of a lemony colour. It's got no pit guard on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, <laughs> bit of a bit of a flame top on there. Bit of a '59 style. Yeah. Bit of some pickups. Bit of a, a big chunky neck. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have the outer phase in between sound. It does not. Uh, it does not. No. But we, you want to hear it in the Fender? I do. Okay. Well, it sounds like this. Here's your second favourite chord. In our turn guitar. I think so. With the F in the bass, my first favourite chord. <laughs> my this this neck is really fat. My thumb is just too swollen from got, from the painkillers. He's got little tiny Danish thumbs. Hello. That sounds so nice. That's good. And that's middle position. Very cool. Ah! Really, really. And nice. this is how they would. This is how they would play. Now I can't really. It's very loud in here. But you know, you've got Clapton, for instance in the early days, he would just plug into a Fender, wouldn't he? And then just turn it up like completely to the max. I want to try, try something. You want to try something, I okay. I want to try something. Now, I was with um, a man named Bonamassa just recently. Oh, we got these plugs here. It's, so. a, sh it's a shame we don't have uh -huh. a, name, a name drop horn. Yeah, no drop horn. Now, a guy called what? Bonamassa. Who? Yeah. Who? <laughs> and we were um, actually doing an interview for Guitarist Magazine and <laughs> He was, we were there in a um, dressing room and he had a 59 Les Paul uh, and a Fender Champ, <laughs> right? And the yeah. Champ was just cranked. It was bonkers and You're it was, going, yeah, no, it was no, sounding no, please, com no. completely awesome, but British blues sound, a really good British blues sound. So we've got uh, this uh, inspired by, um, artist inspired Les Paul and we've got a uh, JTM 45. So JTM 45. Just see if, if we can make some love happen here in a minute. So Which these will be stuck in Anderson soon yeah. as well. Oh man, that sounds good. Sounds nice. I'm yeah. just going to put a bit of um, pedal on here. Yeah. Too much. Too much. Oh man, 
This is uh, an 80 Andy Timmons. So. <laughs> Now, let's Paul fans and players will know this, but the way I always play a guitar is I turn it all up to 10 and hit it as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> Fuck. And what Bonamassa was saying to me was that actually you lose a lot when you do that. Oh, because really? Because the whole thing's compressing and the amp's compressing and everything's everything going, compressing. Oh, no, 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 too much, too he much. He says, yeah. do this. Turn the volume down to nine and the tone down to about half and play softly. So I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna do the first thing. Top tip let's, today. Let's, let's see if it works. Let's see if yeah? it works. Saying was, was actually if you just lay off a bit, let the let the guitar do a bit more of the yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it sounds good as well. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. Pete's gonna maybe, see. Maybe just... Pete's gonna see what that sounds like in the edit and decide whether to keep it in or not. <laughs> I'll keep everything in. Yeah. I think the amp probably needs to be cooking a bit more, but. Yeah, but that's that's problem with the JCM. It's just so loud. We can't yeah. possibly turn it up all the way. You know. Yeah. So, but anyway. Anyway. Okay, so it's a good idea. Anyway, great. But. So that's a lovely guitar. Yeah, and you know. All right, I think this one is probably inspired by Peter Green, but it could equally be inspired by Slash. It could equally be inspired by Jimmy Page if it had a uh, yeah, if a, a, a thingy yeah. on it. Let's face yeah. it, plenty of people. But this is the whole thing that I mentioned. It's just you know, great Les Pauls, right? exactly, and they still do. And you know, you've got the Skinner Burst, which is uh, Bonamassa's uh, guitar, which is also you know you can you can get that as a signature, can't you? So, 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 so I was saying, um, yeah. So you know, any number of um, guitar players. Yep. I've played a Les Paul. Played bursts. That's it, really, basically. Anyway, look at this. Woo! I think actually I would hand this to you because you're more so inclined with the open tunings and the sorts. Do you want to plug into here? Uh, yeah, okay, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Okay, so uh, based on a 52 type tele stroke no caster, although it does say telecaster on the headstock, um, ash body, butter scotch uh, finish, butter scotch blonde, um, humbucker in the neck. Yeah. A couple of people have done that. Jeff Beck uh, yeah. had two, and of course Keith Richards. Yeah. Keith. So, yes, clearly. Uh, Definitely in that ballpark, lovely and light um, journeyman finish. Yep. Which is, in, which my, they all have. in my opinion, Fender's nicest relic finish because yep. it's kind of just right. The lacquer checking's good. Um, Nitro. A few chips and all that business. Um, and so, Seymour Duncan uh, 59 in the neck and a broadcaster relic pickup yep. in the bridge. And they sound thusly. Uh, we've got. We got the nobles on. We got the nobles on now. The nobles is on now into the deluxe. So. Um... And without the nobles, it sounds a little bit spiky, but. Sound a teletone. You know, yeah, great that kind of, that's a great telly tone. Really comes into yeah. when we got a bit, a tiny bit of drive on it, and then yeah. the pick up just leave the settings the same. That definitely comes out, doesn't it? That's nice. Big, I mean, fat, uh, it's a little bit less uh, bright sounding. So, yeah. uh, I mean, you could roll the tone back a bit, and you've got a.
I'll stop trying to play jazz there because clearly Great. that's not my thing. But, <laughs> you know, why not? <laughs> Who knows? Because you know it was that era, wasn't it, when there was yeah, a lot of jazz going on, Joe Pass and stuff, and he was Craig probably inspired a little bit like. Yeah. So who knows? So he was the, inspired by the jazz to put put a pickup in his. Uh, hey, you see what I did there? I <laughs> see what I did there. And uh, we'll just stick some overdrive on that. Noble. No pickup. <laughs> Loads of bottom end, yeah. Too much bottom Probably end, but uh, depending on what amp you're using, yeah. Ace, Ace, Brilliant. quite quite a huge um, discrepancy in, in super biting treble from the uh, bridge pickup and quite. So you can see a very usable, friendly guitar actually, because you can get loads of different tones out of it. Yeah, I mean to be honest, I spend ninety eight percent of my time on this pickup on a telly anyway. Well, there you are. Because you get, you know. <laughs> So, um, that's, so that's, uh, that's that, it, that's the telly. That's the sound for that's me. The, that is the sound for you, it sounds great. So, must we move on? Yes, so uh, I shall hand this lead back to you, yeah. Pete, using our Planet Wave silent plugs. <laughs> if you push the thing in. Isn't that clever? See how that works? Yeah, that is great. So now I can just un... Oh. <laughs> we, we, um, we've kind of stopped using the Marshall because it sounds a little bit spiky. We can't really turn it up enough. Um, and yeah. For whatever reason, it's just... Yeah, so we just we, yeah, we go you know, with the, the good old. Some days it happens, and some days it happens less. And yeah. today it's just happening less. So exactly. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to this. That's the same settings as that just came out from. So. It's the sound very close to my heart. Rosewood board strap. Yeah, sorry. Is it a yeah slab rosewood board? Yeah. Uh, mint green pick guard, obviously. Gold hardware. Yeah. Black finish. This finish is very thin. It's you can really see. It's really thin. It's really really thin. Sunk in good and proper, isn't it? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Super thin. <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. So you know, uh, pickups. Yeah. So who do we know that's got a black strap with gold hardware, Peter? Oh God, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. But you you know who that is. <laughs> so, you know. Actually, to be fair, Hank Marvin had a red one with gold hardware. Didn't he? He did. And it's the same guitar, slab board, 60s. It's the same, you know, that's, the, that's this is what I said about earlier. Again, I'm mentioning it again. You yeah. Know, pe these, all these people actually just pick any guitar out of it. And then maybe maybe Hank Marvin put some gold thing on there. No, maybe. no, a custom order it was. Was it? Cliff ordered it. Oh, see, a Cliff ordered for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Actually, the first one was Maple, to be fair, but anyway. What do you call a man with a uh, with a seagull on his head? Cliff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you call a man with a spade on his head? Doug. Doug, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they're just, I don't, I don't know any English jokes, apart from rude ones. Yeah. Oh, you can't tell me. Anyway, let's get some more tones. What? Just to finish the point on the uh, Shadows and Hank Marvin thing, don't please don't send a Scud missile to my house and blow me up. <laughs> um, Hank started with a maple board strap, he, he later got a rosewood strap, some of which may have had gold hardware, so anyway. Okay, we, you know, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is all, you know, we never, we weren't there, we don't know what happened. <laughs> no, and if we were there, there we wouldn't there, tell there, you. There are people who really, really, really do, so. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, Good. moving on. i tell you who else played a back strap, and that, that, that guitar actually reminds me more, despite the gold hardware, okay. of John Frusciante oh. from Chili Peppers. Because his, yeah. on Blood Sugar Sex Magic, he had a, a, a black strat uh, with a one of these. Oh yeah, and, there you uh, are. some killer sounds. So yeah, yeah I mean it's, you, you know. But let's get some tones anyway, you know, you know the strat tones, but. Thank you. 
and so on. Lovely, lovely. Let's hear a bit of nobles yeah. on that Let's one. Let's go nobles. Oh, the drive's down. Yeah, I know. Oh, sorry. Keep going. In the day. That does sound very cool, actually. But it actually, it's one of those. Nice you just, you just, you know. I. There's. It's no surprise or no secret that we both like Stratocasters. Yes. Um. I like them because they're very versatile. Um. And let's, it's, let's it can't really go wrong with it. It shouldn't. The, the the magic of the Strat. It shouldn't. It it actually should not sound. Like it does. Do you know what I mean? Because well. it's a, it's how it's put together and all that different stuff. It should not sound like that, but it doesn't. I like it. I'm going to give the Marshall a chance to redeem itself. Yes. Same tuning as well, but great. There, there you go. That's the. That's the. That's that. And there's a there's a reverb an RE6 from Boss down there. Just yeah, and that was the AT. Uh, and AT, AT yeah. yeah. I, fingers aren't working 100% today, Pete. But no, it is late in the day. But and, but, uh, but 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 nice. I am very fussy about strats. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're not fussy about everything. <laughs> very fussy about strats. It's good, man. I like that a yeah, lot. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not just saying that. No. Because I wouldn't. Because we do play a lot of stuff. Yeah. All the time, and uh, when yeah. we say it, we actually mean it. That's the right way. It, it is. Uh, these are really like these ones. Super I thin finish. Yeah, super thin 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 thin. No bells or whistles apart from the goldness, but I don't mind that. No. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, links are below in the description, and um, we've got loads of these coming. Yeah. Oh, there's not loads of them, but there is there is a certain coming, and and they will be on the website. And when you look at them, you'll be able to see who. Uh, who kind of inspired these? Um, you know, it's it, the staff and the captain has gone through and sort of come up with, oh, I like this player. This would be so. That's how they kind of kind of came about. I'd like a John Bonham inspired uh, three three five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll sort that out for you. And then a Norman Wisdom inspired left-handed Kramer Beretta. Who's Norman Wisdom? He was a sixties British comedian who kept falling over. See that? Oh, okay, well we can do that as well. Yeah. So anyway. ideas below for inspired by guitars, I think. That's a good idea. Yeah, Anderson's yeah. inspired artist inspired guitars. Yeah. Why not? Yes. Good idea. Yeah. Well, well there we are then. The winner wins uh, a guitar lesson from Pete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. A Skype guitar lesson with Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> should we do that? <laughs> oh, Peter, I have to do this. Well, you know what? That really sounds good, though. And on that bombshell. On that bombshell, bombshell. Well, I think we need to end this uh, episode of Guitar Paradiso on Anderson's TV. 
He was annoying. <laughs> and I'm Pete. <laughs> and he's Danish. <laughs> we'll see you bye. soon. Bye bye. <laughs>